we see the specialization across all areas of life. We have some people that are doctors and other people that are engineers and other people that are school teachers and other people that are construction workers. And the idea is we, we'd like to have people develop a set of skills and hone them and they can't do that if they have to be a jack of all trades. The same is true for our government officials. We think that it's best for someone to develop a specialty in lawmaking, and develop a specialty in adjudication, and develop a specialty in different forms of executive action. We have diplomats that stay in the State Department. We have prosecutors that uh, mostly work in the Justice Department. And so this idea of specialization is very intuitive and makes a lot of sense. And we see this not only across the three branches, but within each branch. Congress has various committees that are specialized. Within the executive branch, we have specialized departments. We just don't have general law enforcers. And then the courts, there's some specialization, right? There's, there's some subject matter courts that have authority over particular areas of federal law, like the Court of Federal Claims and the Tax Court and other sorts of courts. Well, there's no doubt that apart from the idea that the separation of powers furthers liberty, there's also some benefits from specialization of function. The separation of powers was not created by the Constitution and it predated it. And our Constitution just reflects a particular conception of the separation of powers. I think many people in our country believe that it's highly beneficial to have a separation of powers. I think most systems have a certain separation of powers. Um, they don't all look the same, but I think everyone can understand that there are both reasons sounding in liberty, but also reasons sounding in sort of specialization of functions that suggest the separation of powers is a good idea.